As a kid, I didn't know what a bullet was. And this is how it was described to me for the very first time. It's that motorcycle with a big headlamp, big tank, and when it goes by, you hear this doof, 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 doof sound. I wasn't very sure. So I was told it's the motorcycle that you see all the police wallas on. Still not very sure. So then I was told it's the motorcycle that the dude wala comes on with the cans on the side. Ah, I got that. And that was a long time back when the bullet was a bullet first and Royal Enfield second. But like I said, all of that was a very long time back. And so much has changed. New needs have created a new Royal Enfield and a new legion of customers. Nowadays, Royal Enfields are seen ferrying laptops and gym bags on weekdays. And on weekends, they play the starring role in Facebook posts. Royal Enfield and their motorcycles are no longer rustic tools. They are urban cool. In 2013, Royal Enfield is a brand to be reckoned with, known as much for its lifestyle image as for its motorcycles. And if you walk into a Royal Enfield showroom today, you'll find it packed with variants of the classic motorcycle and of course the Thunderbird. And of course, a queue of customers waiting to get one. So in this kind of scenario, do you think that there's still space for this Royal Enfield's old school Bullet 500? <laughs> But I think that the Bullet 500 can make a really strong case for itself. Here's why. Firstly, the Bullet 500's motor is actually low-tech. It's gone back to a carburetor. And that is fantastic news for traditional Bullet fans who want something to tinker around with and will spend Sunday mornings getting their hands dirty. This is absolutely golden for them. The lack of electronic and electrical interference makes the carburetor a preferred system to be stuck with when the chips are down, say, in the middle of a desert. Secondly, the way the engine and carburetor are set up, you get peak power and torque early in the rev range. So you learn to shift up early, ride that slug of torque, sit back and relax. The mighty 499cc single-cylinder four-stroke motor's 26.1 bhp of power is pumped out at 5,100 rpm, while the peak torque of 4 kg is developed at 3,800 rpm. In our roll-on acceleration test, you can see that the Bullet 500 is only a few tenths of a second slower than the classic 500, which is very impressive. And the benefit of its easy-going nature is apparent in the fuel efficiency. The Bullet 500 returns 32.6 km per litre to the Classics 28.9. Now I can't believe I'm about to say this, but this motorcycle actually feels quite smooth. I mean the clutch feels almost buttery, the gear shifts are precise, and the engine as long as you don't rev it too hard, turns over quite happily. Now, from the saddle, this motorcycle is really quite pleasant to steer. I mean, the seating position is nice, the handlebar has a nice rise to it, so easy to reach out, very comfortable, relaxing in that sense. And that aside, it is very nice to steer too in terms of agility. Despite its weight and size, you could maneuver this through city traffic or sit out on the highway and just cruise along. The Bullet 500 comes with grippy MRF rubber with a 19-inch front rim and an 18-inch rear. The Bullet 500 is also a shade heavier than the Classic 500. Not that it hampers the ride experience in any way. So is this very different looking from other Royal Enfields? No, but somehow it is different, isn't it? I think the centerpiece for me is the emblem on the tank reminds you of those old bullets and well for the old vintage feel of course there's also the amp meter here to show you the condition of the battery you have the flared and step seat and uh, oh the mirrors let me not forget the mirrors round mirrors very easy to adjust really cool modern touch 
a foam backrest for the pillion. Some of the styling cues, like the seat and bigger fenders, are responsible for the couple of extra kilos that the Bullet 500 carries. Despite that, it is going rather well for this motorcycle. So, what's missing? Well, I'm sure the spec sheet ninjas will be quick to point out that some of the power and torque has gone missing along with that fuel injection system. And sure, if you wind the revs up, you'll find that a little bit of punch is missing. But low down in the rev range, the torque, twist on offer, I don't think that's lacking. And by no means is this a slow motorcycle. So compared to the classic 500, the straight line performance is slower. From 0 to 60, the gap is very narrow. But as the revs climb, you can see the bullet 500 falling behind. To the 100 km hour mark, the fuel injected classic is faster by almost 2 seconds. And when it comes to cruising, the bullet 500 is happiest between the 80 to 90 km hour zone. And like most Royal Enfields, the ride quality is great over lighter imperfections or slightly broken roads. But when you hit a big bump, some really rough stuff, it will toss you around. And the fled seat for the rider could do with better cushioning for longer rides. And the one thing that really needs to get fixed is that front disc brake, the feel at the levers is just so wooden. Okay, there is one last gripe. Even though the Bullet 500 felt smoother and better put together than any previous Royal Enfield we've ridden, we still had a few issues. The bike silencer and the EGR hose did come loose. Clearly, there is still some way to go. So the Bullet 500 has its shortcomings, but its simplicity and laid-back air give it enough appeal to coax you to look past those shortcomings. Sometimes less is more, and in the Bullet's case, that's exactly how it is. You know, I really had fun piloting this motorcycle around. This handlebar with a slight rise to it gives you a nice seating position, very upright and comfy. Uh, that aside, it turns in also surprisingly quickly. It feels agile for a motorcycle that's, well, 193 kilos.